James Denton has stepped into the studio. <laughs> oh. And uh, James, of course, you know you love him from Desperate Housewives, now available in 700 countries <laughs> in 400 different languages. <laughs> And uh, you should see me in Mandarin. Yes, you, I am really sexy. Have you ever now? Okay, let's talk about that for <laughs> just a second. Now, how many how many countries is that show? Oh my gosh, it was over two hundred territories, which I didn't even realize there were that many. Two hundred so territories. Yeah, over two hundred. How many languages did they dub it into? I don't know. Everything you can. I mean, I've seen I've seen the Mandarin, which is hysterical, and I've seen the the Spanish, which I am kind of sexy in the Spanish. The the Mandarin I, is just comical because it's so overacted. And my character was so wooden and horrible and boring anyway <laughs> that, that I'm just standing there monotonely speaking, as I always did, and then this voice is just going crazy, you know, overdubbed. So it's funny. Well, it's great, too, because in some of these languages, you know, if, if you are just saying, like, not today, it's... <laughs> just for not today. Exactly, you're right. Fantastic. And your mouth has stopped moving longer, <laughs> and you're still talking. Do you ever find that... that uh, have you traveled around the world yet to find that you're an international sensation in some place you had no idea even existed? I no, I don't travel that much, but I was surprised. Um, I work for this uh, a French clothing company called Daniel Hester, um, and they uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. And uh, yeah, but they've been really good to me. So we were huge in France. I didn't realize that. I went over just last year because it's kind of really died down here. I I made the mistake of going out of the hotel just to walk around the neighborhood in mm -hmm. Paris. Big mistake. I got saved by a great big giant man in an Indiana Hoosier sweatshirt. He saw me pinned against a building with like 30 people deep. Wow. I had no idea what to do. I really? really was a little bit, wow. it was disconcerting because I didn't know how to get out of it. And he recognized me. He was with his family and he bullied his way up there and said, you need some help? And I was like, yeah. And he kind of dragged me out of there. <laughs> yeah, it was American in distress. American, in American distress. actor in distress. That's right. Come yeah, on, you so French chippies, get out of the way! <laughs> just tossing him off. Like I that. bet he called you Mike the whole time, too. Oh, they <laughs> all, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike. Yeah, he did call me Mike. But still, at least hey, he showed up. Hey, good man. So I did find out that we were we were huge in Paris. You know, it's so funny because you and I have known each other a long time, and you are one of the most uh, gracious, and I would say uh, humble. Patient. Patient and humble <laughs> actors uh, I have ever met. <laughs> ever met. I mean, from the minute that, that this thing hit, you've never changed. You've never changed. Oh. And and that is the most amazing thing, because everyone else on the show did. And <laughs> Oh, I know one of them, actually. She went into it that way, and I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Personality didn't really change. <laughs> just got confirmation that she... That, oh, told you I was the center of the universe. But see, I've said that about about fame. It doesn't, it doesn't change as much as it takes your qualities and magnifies them. It just puts a spotlight on who you are, I found. Yeah. And so it must be weird for you when the... When something like that happens in Paris, right, or, or anywhere, and it's sort of like, and I, because I knew when he was Jamie and everybody thought he was a girl. Uh, that <laughs> That's why they made me go by Jamie. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Really? Because everybody thought you yeah, were a girl? Threat Matrix, the uh, terrorism show I did before Housewives, mm -hmm. I was the so-called lead on it, um, which may have been the reason it lasted one season. Um, but uh, they wanted me to use James because Jamie was just too, you know, ambiguous. Uh, you know, the, I, actually, that was actually, that show had some, some good qualities to it. I think the problem was with the title. Because it sounded yes. like the movie that Michael Scott made on The Office, like that he was working on in his part yeah. time. Yeah. Gonna, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put two hot things. Threat and Matrix. It really did. <laughs> right. When it's actually, it's actually a document that the president receives every morning. He, right. he threat Matrix, threat, or yeah. used to. But it, and it was the, oh, first, it was the awesome. first show about terrorism. And this right. was the 2002. Yeah. We got destroyed but because we were taking advantage of people's fears about 9-11. Well, now there are 17 of them on. Right. And we're also on Thursday night at 7 o'clock, a very kind of didactic, hmm. violent show. And uh, we, we looked back in the last show that lasted two years on ABC, Thursday at 7, was Mork and Mindy. <laughs> so uh, we didn't really have much... <laughs> Honey, what do you want to do tonight? Do you want to watch a bunch of really attractive people in a coffee shop talking about all kinds of great religious. relationships or Threat Matrix? The final season of Friends and the first season of Survivor were on NBC and CBS. Yeah. Yeah. They were that, dead out of That didn't work out. It wasn't my fault. But, it wasn't my fault at all. But then Desperate Housewives, <laughs> when you went and you did that, and uh, did you have any sense, because it was... Uh, unconventional, yeah. to say the least, right? Because Very. it was, it looked like sort of one of these uh, suburban drama kind of mm -hmm. deals, and and like like what Dallas would have been, or a show yeah. like that. But it had this twisted core. It had this mm -hmm. this sexual darkness and other, you know, violence, darkness, and all that. And were you thinking, oh well, here we go, threat metrics too? <laughs> you know, I was. Terry Hatcher and I had a conversation shooting the pilot. 
that's a shame nobody's ever going to see this because it's really pretty good. But ABC was the bottom of the barrel. We're running Who Wants to Be a Millionaire five nights a week. Right. The Regis yeah, people forget about that. Yeah, there was yeah. no scripted drama, you know. So we didn't think anybody would ever see it because I had done three ABC shows in a row. They were one year and out. Um, but it really was hard. It was fell between the cracks, which is probably why I never won anything. You know, Mark Cherry never won an Emmy. And it brought back scripted drama because Grey's launched after us, lost right. the house, um, and he never won anything because it wasn't a comedy and it wasn't a drama. Right. I think that's part of why. It wasn't the greatest show on TV, but that first year was about as good as TV gets. It had everything. It really did, and Ro makes a great point, James, because at the time it was a very different time. And I, I think it's one of the shows, when they talk about groundbreaking, and there are, some of those shows are the ones that set the table for what we're having now, which you know, where, where you see all these dramas, of course, a lot of them on cable, that might not have come about if not for some chances that people were taking about 10 years ago. Yeah, I think you're exactly yeah. right, because it was pretty risque. We were always fighting with standards and practices about what we could do. Yeah. Sure. And people laugh about, you know, their kids watching it or did my kids ever see it. And it was more violent than sex. We didn't have much sex. In fact, that's what it really lacked. The last five you're the only one having sex. There was no romance, but there was a lot of violence. We killed 56 characters. Including you. 56. Me, yeah. He, he, very, very he, he took, the, sh he took the, the shot right good to night. the chest. That was a good one. That was a good one. That's a good death. Good death scene. Yeah. Very well done. Thank you. And fun. It's hard to do, because you really have to sell it. <laughs> and Terry's the one that made it work. She was heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. It really was. It was good. I, wow. I, didn't, I wasn't sure how it would go, but it was. It was How many good. times did you have to take the shot? How many um, shots? We only. Shot? Well, it was pretty complicated because you have the electrical wire up one leg of your pants and the, and the blood tube up the other, mm -hmm. and it's actually a charge, and so it takes a long time to do. And TV's a pretty fast schedule, so we did it twice. Oh wow! Yeah. And it was the only scene in which he was actually wearing a shirt, as I recall. <laughs> From <laughs> just to cover the from blood pack. from all exactly from all eight series, <laughs> seasons or whatever that was they couldn't make uh, an exploding pack they, 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 they thought they about it though believe oh, me a small man. incision on the side no one will see it <laughs> did you ever wonder about that that, they, that uh, Mark Cherry had your shirtless through the entire series uh, did you ever concern yourself that bad all right but it was not di much different it's funny I fought the battle that, that I never had that women often fight where they would call me into the office and say you got to get in the gym. You really need wow. to go get the gym. Yeah, and you're like, really? I'm 50 years old. Can you just back off? And just, just let me do something else. <laughs> yeah, and now it's funny. This pilot season, I finally took a few meetings because I was just kind of testing the waters. Yeah. The feedback I got, three different jobs I didn't get. It's too skinny. Too what? skinny. Looks well, who says that, that on television? Oh, no, a number really? of people. Because I guess now they want, I'm supposed to be Chris Noth or something, you know, because you got to play senators and dads and CEOs. Oh. And, mm. and I said, well, what's it going to be? So I guess the days of taking my shirt off are over. So the boys, <laughs> the same. I know, sorry. <laughs> oh, now our microphone works. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Isn't that funny? Because it's like, you know, that, that was that was the that line. Was what movie was that? For Tootsie or whatever? No. No, it was later the, than that. The, the pullback line? Where, about the women, you know, where there's, you know, you're the ingenue, then you're Madam District Attorney, then you're driving with Daisy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. For women. Those are free roles for women. It's really true. In Hollywood. And it's, it's kind of true now for guys. You're yeah. either, you know, you're the young tough, you're the, yeah. you know, the cop or the firefighter or the lawyer, and then you're the senator. Right, yeah. or the pre and it's always the yeah. evil side. Or of the it. stupid dad. Yeah, the stupid dad who gets made. You know, these kids make fun of. Yeah, it's, it really is. Now, Mark Harmon, thankfully, is kind of paving a way for guys in their late fifties, and because he's the you know that's another yeah. show on TV. Oh, somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the guys have it much easier. We, so we have a little that. longer shelf life. You could be, it could be uh, ACIS, Army, <laughs> something intelligence. <laughs> you could do yeah. you could do something. I mean, everything. Yeah. What kind of things are you going for? You know, I did this little family movie we were just talking about, Grace Unplugged. We're going to talk about that after the break. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you know, Jamie used to work in radio, so he just cued me to hit the bell. Yeah, it's a damn I, I, hit the, I hit my invisible bell. Um, but it was fun because it's something my kids can watch. It's a really wholesome family thing that yeah. there's not enough of. So little independent films. I did three last year, and it was, you're not gone from home that much. In Minnesota, I'm in Minneapolis now. Right. It's a great theater town, so I did two plays. So it was a good year. I was, I was happy. It was much more fun than L.A. All right, we'll come back with uh, James, or we'll call him Jamie Denton, uh, <laughs> in 45 seconds. But first...